heard about the buzz surrounding Meghan Markle's visit to the Sova market. Recently, a former royal employee opened up about feeling bullied by her sparking curiosity about her behavior during that visit. Join me in this video as we take a closer look at what went down. Hello friends, welcome to the King YouTube channel. During a tour to Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Tonga, shortly after her marriage to Harry, Meghan displayed some surprising hostility towards the public, which was quite different from her previous trips. There was an event at the PG market celebrating women's empowerment and entrepreneurship on that particular day, but things took a turn for the worse unexpectedly. Megan abruptly ended her interaction with the event and swiftly departed with security, leaving many disappointed. During the trip, a Daily Mail reporter stated they witnessed Meghan Markle angrily hiss at a member of her entourage and demand to leave. They also observed a charity employee visibly upset and crying, suggesting a tense situation. The incident was later labeled by palace staff as a security concern, though there was no evidence supporting this. Some speculated Megan's dissatisfaction with the charity she was no longer involved with could be a factor. The reality is Meghan Markle seems to only care about herself. It's evident she didn't consider the Fijian women or their time in the scorching sun. The presence of Fiji police indicates they were aware of any security concerns. Megan reportedly took offense because the women wore t-shirts from another charity, which was incredibly rude. This disregard for protocol is why royal visits have rules to ensure smooth operations. Megan's lack of respect for these norms led to attempts to cover up the incident as a security issue, which is disrespectful to the Fijian people. It's disappointing to see Harry and Meghan act so entitled and disrespectful. This event significantly influenced perceptions of Meghan Markle's behavior and the overall success of the tour. It left many media personnel and attendees feeling disappointed and confused. Contrasting it with other royal visits, like Queen Elizabeth II's trip to Bergen-Belsen and her historic visit to the Republic of Ireland in 2011, highlights the profound impact of royal engagement conducted with sensitivity and cultural awareness. Meghan, unfortunately, lacks these qualities. Her flaws, including narcissism and a lack of compassion for others, make her unfit to represent the royal family. It seems Harry's behavior is just as disappointing as Meghan's. Their actions in Fiji were incredibly rude, despite it being a, being a beautiful place. Numerous accounts from people attending an event in event in Wellington describe Harry and Meghan walking past the crowd without even acknowledging them. This rude behavior from Harry started after Meghan joined him. It's unfortunate that he seems too weak to stand up to her and lets her do as she pleases. Honestly, Meghan's actions have significantly damaged the efforts of the royal family to unite. For too long, mainstream media treated her with leniency, overlooking her disgraceful behavior during the trip to Australia, Fiji, and New Zealand. It's highly unusual for any royal member to hastily cut short a visit like Meghan did. At this point, it wouldn't be surprising if Australia reconsidered welcoming the king for a visit this year. Harry and Meghan showed little concern for who they hurt or the damage they caused. It was clear from the beginning that Meghan had no intention of committing to the responsibilities of being a senior royal. If she truly wanted that lifestyle, she could have pursued it by studying and learning from reputable sources. But evidently, that wasn't her priority. From the start, Meghan's main goal was simply to hold onto the title she gained through her marriage to Harry, and she succeeded in doing so thus far. Knowing that Harry would never become king and she would never be queen, she struggled with the idea of having to defer to others. The notion of working hard without wearing a crown didn't sit well with her. Meghan's behavior suggests narcissism she desired everything and pushed Harry to distance himself from his family, with his compliance evident. Apart from holding his title and being the son of the king with a position on the State Advisory Council, Harry doesn't actively contribute to helping the people of the UK. The same can be said for Meghan. Instead of creating positive change, they seem to cause more harm. Looking back at the images from the Fiji market, we get a glimpse of Meghan's true nature as a narcissistic individual. One can only wonder what the staff there thought when meeting them for the first time at such an event. It's disheartening to see how poorly they treated those women who had put an effort to prepare for the market. Meghan's interest in female empowerment seems to be limited to her own agenda. It's truly disgusting how Meghan took advantage of these lovely women who simply wanted a moment of her time. As someone representing the late queen, Meghan should have seen it as a privilege, but she clearly didn't care about her responsibilities. 
Instead, she let her own feelings dictate her behavior. Harry made a terrible choice in marrying her. Meghan only seems to cause trouble wherever she goes. The royal family is much better off without them. It's a shame, and Harry should know better. He doesn't deserve respect for allowing Meghan to harm the family like this. Meghan's entitled and undiplomatic behavior in Fiji truly stood out. It was a good thing that both she and Harry decided to leave the UK and step back from royal duties. When the late queen wanted to meet with Meghan and she declined, I believe that was when they were given a stern warning. Meghan's shocking rudeness likely led to her being sent to Canada with Sophie ensuring she boarded the plane. Otherwise, she might have continued causing problems and being a nightmare. Honestly, Meghan remains a nightmare wherever she goes. Trouble seems to follow her closely no matter where she ends up. How could anyone trust these two? They're incompetent, lazy, and work shy. They frequently canceled royal engagements and showed up late to many others. Meghan showed no commitment whatsoever. She desired a lavish lifestyle without wanting to put in any effort in return. She's like a parasite. Honestly, I believe the Duke was acting on advice from palace officials when Meghan needed to leave the UK. She was causing too much harm. The fact is, she was leaking information to the British media, and then Harry had the audacity to blame the media for all their problems. It's ridiculous. If you take a closer look, it's evident that Meghan Markle is the root cause of much instability. Despite lacking original ideas, she sees herself as superior to others, though she lacks class. Do you recall Meghan's inappropriate behavior at Charles's 70th birthday garden party, where she stuck out her tongue and remarked to Harry, let's go? This is boring. Guests overheard her, and they were promptly asked to leave shortly after their marriage. One thing we can say for sure is that Meghan's rude and despicable behavior has been consistent. Australia might be where Meghan left the worst impression. There are numerous rumors of bullying and mistreatment of staff, including instances where she demanded the governor general and his wife vacate Admiralty House so she could stay with her entourage, not content with a wing, Megan also expressed disbelief at not being paid for a walkabout. Who does she think she is? Australians won't forget or forgive such ugly behavior. It seems Australia was among the first to be done with them. They'll never be welcomed back because, as usual, Megan tried to make the trip about herself. It's clear Megan doesn't possess the qualities needed to be royal. She and Harry are becoming a joke worldwide. Megan's father once told her she could be anything, and she apparently chose to be a pathological liar and narcissist. At this point, Megan's sense of entitlement is greatly inflated. Megan always craves the spotlight, seeking admiration every single day. Her evil nature becomes evident, yet some foolishly choose to ignore it, making them even more ignorant than she is. I'm referring to the sugar squad, who excuse her narcissistic and hateful behavior. Remember how she acted during the South Africa tour? Megan complained about not being asked if she was okay. And what about her disrespectful behavior during the tour to Morocco? Public displays of affection, walking ahead to shake hands with the Moroccan king before Harry did nothing justify such actions. I can only imagine how embarrassed the late queen must have felt seeing her representatives behave like that during foreign tours. Harry and Meghan are so ignorant that they fail to grasp the importance of representing an entire country. This is why comparing them to the late queen is futile. Let's consider Queen Elizabeth's visit to Ireland, which focused on healing the wounds of the past. She and Prince Philip acknowledged the country's history and the suffering it endured. Meghan and Harry will never comprehend this as they only think about themselves. Meghan's behavior in Fiji is evidence of this selfishness. There's no need to make excuses for those opportunists. They may not be heirs to the throne, but at the time, they still held their titles and were senior members of the royal family representing both the monarchy and the country. Every member is expected to fulfill their duty with dedication and hard work. Take Princess Anne, for example. She's consistently supportive and hardworking. I know someone who met her at an event on a cold, gray, rainy day. Despite the weather, she took the time to speak with every volunteer and beneficiary of the charity services. That's what being a hardworking royal entails. Princess Anne has an incredible knack for connecting with people. She listens attentively, picks up on small details about them, and then uses that information to engage in meaningful conversations. She genuinely knows how to relate to others and express gratitude for their contributions to charity or any other service. This, once again, exemplifies what royal work should be about. It's not about seeking attention for oneself, but rather about connecting with and appreciating others. Megan refuses even to shake hands with the public, believing she's above mingling with ordinary people. Her disgusting behavior has been evident from the start, 
even during the early days of her marriage to Harry, where she treated people poorly. She consistently gets away with too much without facing any consequences. Megan left the UN Women Group after reportedly having a falling out with them over not being given a prominent leadership role. On the day of the Fiji market visit, upon seeing unwomen represented, she allowed her personal feelings to interfere with her work. Unsurprisingly, she instructed her royal team to halt the proceedings, causing unnecessary stress and confusion and disappointing many attendees. Despite people waiting for hours just to see her, Meghan refused to shake hands or speak with them because they represented something uncomfortable from her past. It's laughable and disrespectful. In contrast, Queen Elizabeth entertained some questionable individuals in the name of diplomacy and government representation, carrying out her duties with grace and dignity, even if she wasn't thrilled about it. That's something Meghan will never grasp. She holds grudges, is vindictive, and doesn't care who she hurts. Megan is not only unprofessional, but also incredibly immature. She never wanted to work hard, assuming that marrying a prince would exempt her from hard work unless she was paid millions for it. Her ego and sense of importance are overinflated, and it's evident that hasn't changed. Despite her behavior, it seems Megan was protected by the royal family, which is appalling considering how she and Harry have insulted those who covered up their misdeeds. It's fortunate that the grifters no longer represent the royal family. The real members of the royal family don't act entitled or expect special treatment. They treat their staff with dignity and respect, showing humility and kindness. Meghan Markle, on the other hand, lacks empathy and compassion. She and Harry expect special treatment wherever they go, acting as if they are more important than others. Their behavior and excessive expectations have led to their downfall. Meghan was initially welcomed with open arms, but then proceeded to criticize and label others as racist. Time and time again, Megan refuses to interact with ordinary people, displaying low-class behavior that's disgraceful and lacking in etiquette, dignity, integrity, and respect for others. Megan is simply unfit for decent society, having caused such chaos. Trusting Harry and Megan to conduct tours would be like sending a couple of moody tweens out there they clearly weren't up to the job. Remember Harry's claim that other royals were jealous of Megan's success. How delusional can they be? Despite Harry claiming their Australian tour was a success in the Oprah interview, they were met with shock upon their return. It's no wonder, given the embarrassment they caused with their rudeness and inappropriate behavior, if Meghan had genuine health reasons for her actions, sincere apologies should have followed, she should have followed, both on the scene and afterwards. The Oprah interview revealed much about their character. From the start, there were glaring holes in their stories, yet Oprah failed to call them out. Both Harry and Meghan contradicted themselves repeatedly, making their stories nonsensical compared to those grounded in honesty. Looking back, it's clear that the palace made a grave mistake in allowing Meghan in. It's fortunate that things turned out the way they did. Meghan's behavior is not indicative of a good leader. She lacks empathy and consideration for others, despite the public's efforts to welcome her. It's no surprise to see Meghan now selling jam on Instagram, as that seems more fitting for her. It's evident that the sole reason she married Harry was for money and fame he means nothing more to her. Harry, like an immature little boy, blindly believed everything Meghan said, falling for her lies. It appears they had plans from the beginning to capitalize on their titles, as they were already in discussions with Netflix and other companies in 2019. Meghan remained in communication with her LA advisors throughout her stay in the UK. Meghan believed she was too good for royal duties and expressed disdain for them, famously saying, I can't believe we're not getting paid for this. She behaved like a spoiled brat during the tour, especially evident during the Fiji leg. This tour exposed that Meghan was never truly interested in humanitarian efforts. Despite being there to represent the Commonwealth and show support to Fiji, Meghan made it all about herself, becoming bored when she realized she wasn't the center of attention. She's a narcissist through and through. Many of us realize on their wedding day that this union was doomed from the start. It's heartbreaking to think how upset those Fijian people must have felt. They were eagerly anticipating meeting Meghan and Harry only to be treated poorly. Yet in the end, they're the ones who have formed genuine friendships, showcasing their wonderful craft skills and grace. What does Meghan have to show for herself? A few jars of jam, ruined friendships, and not much else. Meghan didn't even acknowledge the crowd once inside the car. She simply stared straight ahead. It was clear she didn't want to be there. It wasn't glamorous enough for her. She doesn't embody the spirit of the people, not in the slightest. 
Despite her attempts to claim otherwise, Megan is no sister to anyone, not even her biological sister. The truth is, Megan was never cut out to be a royal and neither was Harry or else he would have chosen a better partner. Megan was handed a privileged life on a silver platter, but she was never satisfied and ultimately threw it all away. I do hope they find peace and privacy away from the public eye as they claim to desire. However, it seems unlikely because Megan craves attention too much. Harry complained about the attention he received since childhood, but now that it's no longer free, he misses feeling important and wants the camera flashes back. Harry and Meghan have made those titles utterly meaningless with their disgraceful behavior. The sooner they lose their titles, the better. They act as though they're superior to the UK royals, but they're just a disgrace. Harry made a poor choice in Meghan, but let's face it, she chose him. I doubt he ever truly wanted her. It's high time their titles are stripped and we can finally be rid of them. The more we witness their behavior, the more repulsive they become. I hope the truth about the surrogate emerges soon. And what about Megan allegedly throwing hot tea on a staff member? It's time for royal reporters to investigate the rumored fire at their South Africa residence. Someone needs to ask the staff and anyone present that day some tough questions. As royal reporters, we hope to uncover the truth behind Meghan and Harry's public behavior. Many have witnessed their rudeness during public engagements, particularly Meghan's. We aim to provide more honest insights. For instance, there was an engagement where Meghan seemed to avoid a little boy seeking her attention. There's also the incident where her mother interrupted her and Meghan gave her an unfriendly look. Additionally, during a train trip with the Queen, Megan walked ahead despite being warned by staff not to do so. We'll strive to shed light on these events and provide accurate information. Megan's true colors reveal an unflattering image. She resented the work required as a royal and opted to exploit the royal family, then swiftly moved on to Spotify. Megan Markle's actions speak volumes about her character. She failed to grasp that royal duties weren't solely about her desire she's excessively self-absorbed. It's crucial to refrain from giving them undue attention. Narcissistic behavior thrives when enabled, so the best approach is to mock and ignore them completely. If only Meghan Markle would focus on her own responsibilities, things could have been different. She never bothered to read the dossiers provided before tours, which would have informed her about the people they were to meet. Unlike other royal family members who familiarized themselves with customs and culture beforehand, Meghan's lack of preparation was evident, particularly during the incident in Morocco. She blatantly disregarded protocol by pushing Harry aside to greet the king first, displaying poor manners. Additionally, at a ceremony, she attempted to walk on the red carpet until the British ambassador's wife intervened, reminding her to walk beside it, not on it. Meghan's behavior on these tours revealed her true character despicable and with a horrible attitude. So all along, this is what we've witnessed from Meghan. It's been a string of failures one after the other. People don't dislike her because of her race. It's her personality and terrible attitude that rub people the wrong way. Meghan never had any intention of becoming a hardworking, proper royal. It was never her goal. She simply doesn't grasp the essence of being a working royal serving others, hard work, and humility. Meghan never cared to understand the job. She just wanted to change it. Eventually, she had to leave, but that was her plan from the start. She figured once she got what she wanted, she'd return to Hollywood. And that's precisely what she did. Well, folks, that wraps up this video. What are your thoughts on the Sussex couple's visit? Please share your opinions in the comments, and if you agree with me, drop a comment as well. If not, let us know your perspective so we can better understand. Don't forget to like and share this video. Your support keeps us going. Subscribe for notifications on our latest content. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.